Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis continuing our bleeding and coagulation disorders playlist. In the previous video, we have talked about the Calicrin kinin system. Today, let's talk about Brady kinin, which comes from the high molecular weight kinogen thanks to plasma calicrin. And let's get started. This poor guy has angioedema. The coagulation cascade in brief, here's fibrin, comes from fibrinogen, here's thrombin, comes from prothrombin, and here is the prothrombinase complex, has four members, two numbers, and two words. Let's go to the extrinsic pathway, tissue factor, activating factor 7. Let's go to the intrinsic, the subendothelial collagen, and the high molecular weight kinogen, and the plasma calicrin, activate factor 12 into 12a, then 11, then 9, then 8. This is slow but more efficient, while the extrinsic is fast but less efficient. Don't forget to stabilize the fibrin using the fibrin stabilizing factor, aka factor 13. The difference between the intrinsic and the extrinsic pathway is easy. Intrinsic needs something from within, such as the subendothelial collagen, the platelet factor 3, the high molecular weight collagen, the plasma calicrin, and if you are in vitro, the wettable surface of the glass of the test tube. More steps, longer cascade, it's slower, but it's more efficient. Start with factor 12, it has four members, 12, 11, 9, and 8. PTT measures the intrinsic and the common pathway. Extrinsic, we need something from outside, maybe from the tissue, the tissue factor. It's a shorter cascade, it's less efficient, but it's faster. Starts with factor 7, only has one factor. PT measures extrinsic and the common pathway. So high molecular weight kinogen and plasma calicrin activate the intrinsic pathway. High molecular weight kinogen can be converted into bradykinin thanks to plasma calicrin. Bradykinin is the topic of today's video. High molecular weight kinogen activates factor 12 and factor 11. Plasma calicrin activates factor 12 and converts the high molecular weight kinogen into bradykinin. High molecular weight kinogen is converted into bradykinin thanks to calicrin. Calicrin also activates factor 12. Factor 12 returns the favor by activating precalicrin into calicrin. This is called a positive feedback. High molecular weight kinogen is a plasma protein. It's inactive, converted into the active form thanks to the contact, and it produces kinin such as bradykinin. Don't confuse high molecular weight kinogen, which is in the plasma, with low molecular weight kinogen, which is in the tissue. How do you activate the intrinsic pathway when you are outside the body, which means in vitro? I don't have subendothelial collagen in this tube yet. I still have high molecular weight collagen, calicrin, platelet factor 3, and the wettable surface of the glass. And that's why, my friends, deficiency of high molecular weight collagen or calicrin is not clinically significant because you still have platelet factor 3 and subendothelial collagen, and if you are in vitro, you have the wettable surface of the glass. So, deficiency of one of them is not that important, clinically speaking. Let me remind you that I have 50 hematology cases on Patreon. Go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis, get those cases, answer them correctly, and make grandma happy. Otherwise, she will get thrombocytosis. High molecular weight kinogen is converted into bradykinin thanks to plasma calicrin. That's why we call it the calicrin kinin system. Bradykinin causes vasodilation, pain, increased vessel permeability, contraction of non-vascular smooth muscles such as the bronchi. Kinins are either bradykinin or calidin, or also known as the lysyl bradykinin. Whether you are in the plasma or in the tissue, you can still produce kinins. If you are in the plasma, you produce bradykinin. If you are in the tissue, you produce calidin. The difference is, this is a high molecular weight kinogen, this is low molecular weight kinogen. This needs plasma calicrin, this needs tissue calicrin. Kinin, o gen, it means it will generate and cause genesis of kinin, such as the bradykinin. Calicrin loves producing bradykinin, but angiotensin converting enzyme just hates bradykinin. Too. That's why we call the ACE kininase, because it destroys the kinin, which is bradykinin in this case. ACE takes bradykinin to the cleaners. We talked about the effects of ACE inhibitors in the previous video, but as you know, ACE inhibitors inhibit the ACE. When you don't have ACE, you have lots of bradykinin floating around, leading to bronchoconstriction and dry cough, increased vessel permeability, which will lead to angioedema, which is a medical emergency. 
you have pain, you have vasodilation, natriuresis, vasodilation, natriuresis will lead to hypotension. And this, my friends, is why you get dry cough and angioedema when you take ACE inhibitors. Doesn't have to be 100% of cases, but it's a possible side effect. What happens when your patient who's on ACE inhibitors develop dry cough or angioedema? Stop the ACE inhibitor, switch them to angiotensin receptor blockers such as losartan. Side effects of ACE inhibitors, we divide them into two categories. First, due to increased bradykinin and second, to, due to decreased angiotensin. Increase, due to increased bradykinin, we have dry cough, we have angioedema, we have hypotension. Due to decreased formation of angiotensin 2, we have hypotension, renal impairment, hyponatremia, hyperkalemia, and metabolic acidosis. How about angiotensin receptor blockers? You don't get these side effects, but you absolutely can get these side effects. So side effects of ACE inhibitors, dry cough, natriuresis, increased vessel permeability, and angioedema. Pain, probably, vasodilation leading to hypotension. You have hypotension renal impairment. You can get angioedema, of course. And here we have natriuresis, hyperkalemia, and acidosis. How about angiotensin receptor blockers? You don't get those, but you can get hypotension, renal impairment, hyperkalemia, and acidosis. Absolutely, yes. Here is the famous renin angiotensin aldosterone system. We start with renin, which converts the hepatic angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. Thanks to ACE, produced by the lungs, we convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 is too powerful and has mainly two functions, vasoconstriction of arterioles and aldosterone release. Aldosterone will reabsorb sodium, secrete potassium or hydrogen. Cool. Don't forget bradykinin comes from the high molecular weight kinogen. Plasma color can activate the step. ACE inhibits the step. And even if you form some bradykinin, ACE will take them to the cleaner and degrade them into inactive, ugly metabolites. So here are the effects of bradykinin in one slide. You have bronchoconstriction and dry cough. You have increased vessel permeability leading to pus and angioedema. You have pain, especially chronic pain. You have vasodilation and natriuresis leading to hypotension. Remember, bradykinin can constrict your bronchioles and can cause angioedema, which can constrict your upper airways. So bradykinin is really not fun for your upper respiratory tract. In the next video, I have a crazy mnemonic about Brady Kynan, so make sure to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell. Subscription without hitting the bell doesn't mean anything anymore. Go to Patreon to get all of my notes and my 50 hematology cases. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.